hello guys and welcome to the champion tutors youtube channel today we are looking at the analysis of the function w which is equal to sine of z so the first thing is that uh, you need to let z be equal to x plus i y like uh, this now rewrite the original function in terms of x and y as uh, w is equal to sine of now where the z we put uh, x plus i y like that and then now if you look at it uh, closely you discover there's something uh, special about this one so uh, you remember the identity there's this identity that uh, you guys need to remember the identity of uh, uh, that's uh, the identity of sine a plus b this identity so this identity is equals to uh, to be the sine of a cos of b plus uh, cos of a multiplied with the yeah cos of a multiplied with uh, sine of b now where a and b they will be our x and i y respectively where there is x we use uh, a and then where there is y we use b and then this implies that our original function will look something like uh, this as we all understand this goes to that so this is what you have you substitute for a and b uh, from the identity and then we have we have uh, this one as it has been written now so this is the same as the original function and then we, uh, we can still rewrite where this i y uh, we can use uh, h okay so these are hy hyperbolic uh, functions you can still replace them where this i y will just replace with the h and then from there uh, if you okay uh, we know to say very well to say that uh, the function uh, w uh, yeah, the function w is the same as the function f of z which is equivalent to u plus iv so uh, the function w is given in terms of u plus iv now we have that um, uh, u would be equivalent to the real part of the function and then iv is equivalent to the imaginary part of the function which then uh, u and v um, v is equal to to be cos x sin uh, hy okay all right so now after this uh, after this one for analysis for analysis there are two conditions for analysis or for a function to be analytic the, it has to satisfy the two conditions and these conditions are uh, the first one is uh, uh, the partial of u with respect to x should be equal to the partial of v with respect to y that's the first condition and the second condition is that uh, the partial of u with respect to y should be equal to the negative the partial of v with the respect to x so these are the two conditions that has to be satisfied by any given uh, function for it to be analytic otherwise it is not so now let's take the partial derivatives we start with uh, the function of u. The function of u is given as a uh, sine x cos y. So the partial derivative of this function, this one, we're only interested in sine x because we are working with x. So sine goes to cos, and then the rest remains the way they are. And then we have to we also have to do it for y for the first for the same function of u. Now this side we understand to say y goes to sign but then it changes the sign so we put the negative there sign x then changes to sign 
y like that and then let's go to the function of v so v also we have to differentiate it with respect to x so we're only working with cos here cos changes to negative sign of x and then the rest we can write them the way they are like that and then we go to v with respect to y again so now we are only working with the sine just write the way cos is cos x and then when we change sine sine becomes cos so we now have all the four uh, partial derivatives that we require for analysis to test for analysis so the first condition the first condition says the partial of u with respect to x should be equal to the partial of v with respect to y and we, ha we already have them so this one is given above the which is a uh, cos x cos y and then this one should be equal to the partial of v with respect to y which is exactly the same thing here as cos x uh, cos y like that so this condition particularly has been satisfied remember there are only two conditions so the first one has been satisfied so we can then go to the second condition now where we say the partial of u with respect to y should be equal to the negative of v with respect to x now look at this this one is a negative the partial of u with respect to y is already a negative so write it like this so that you it doesn't confuse should be equal to the negative so first of all put a negative outside this is a negative here we uh, from the given thing given condition so we put the negative outside and then we now have to write what is uh, v of x v of x is negative sine x sine y like this one but now here's the fun thing not really difficult for a mathematician but then uh, I, I assume you guys you understand what happens here what happens here is that um, the the first one would be written the way it is the second one there are two negatives outside so when they multiply we have this one oh sorry okay okay we have this one now remember the the condition says the negative of that so the negative of a negative it then becomes a positive so this becomes sine x sign y now the negative of a positive is a negative so this side if you multiply with a negative we then have this one okay so so this is what we have for the second condition and it has been satisfied i hope everyone is okay okay now Woo! let us find the derivative of z so finding the derivative of z we know it is given by uh, u with respect to x and i v also differentiated with respect to x so now we have that uh, uh, we already have the partial derivatives of u and v with respect to x so uh, this is what we have now u u u with respect to x uh, if you remember from the pre previous work uh, it is cos x and cos y together like this and also uh, v differentiated with respect to x we have a uh, negative sine of x negative sine of x uh, multiplied with the sine of y like this one and then now we need to use the given formula we say um, f prime of z f prime uh, of z is equivalent to uh, cos x cos y plus so this side is the imaginary part so we put an i outside like this so we write what we have which is negative sine of x sine of y like this so we close and now uh, we can still we can then write uh, just the way it is we, uh, we get rid of the brackets this is what remain with so here there's a negative so we put the negative in between and we write what remains which is a uh, sine x uh, sine y 
and remember this id this id is um it's the imaginary part so we need to put an i just to show that it is an imaginary part thereafter what follows the uh, okay now write it without the brackets if it's okay so we write exactly what is here without the brackets so it's write sign x sign y so also this one looks familiar if you remember what we did in the previous work so remember remember the identity just have to remember the identity uh, remember that uh, remember the identity so now we are working with course what is the identity for course the identity for course uh, for course course open brackets a plus b course open bracket a plus b closed this one is equivalent to uh, of course of a multiplied with the course of b or course of course of x and course of y as we have it here and then minus sign x sign y this is exactly what we have using the uh, identity except you substitute a and b for x and y here so this is what you have and then we can apply the same identity in the uh, equation so uh, we have that uh, uh, this is uh, f prime of z is equivalent to uh, now we can just write what you have we substitute for the identity now which is cos uh, open bracket which is x plus i y the i is for the imaginary part so and we know to say that uh, where x is equal to a and the b is uh, I mean y is equal to b like this so now we understand to say um, uh, cos x plus i y cos uh, x can be can also be written as cos of z so um, this gives us the derivative of the original function so therefore the derivative of f of z is equals to cos of z so this is what you have as your final answer all right guys thanks for watching